get up at like 2 a.m. and get ready for work and and then it'd be like she'd have to walk through my room to go to the bathroom. I'd be like, Mom, it's only 2 o'clock in the morning or things like that. Yeah, she would start a little job and she'd get everything all set up. Then she would leave and about five minutes she comes back. She forgot what she was, what she, what she had to do to finish. She would just do the same tasks over and over again. You know, like put the toast in the oven, the toast would come out in the toaster, and then she'd put it back in the toaster. And, and then she lost a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. We thought she was just doing too much because she was working that early, and maybe it was a schedule and she was just tired. All of this strange behavior was completely out of character for Isabel McKenna, who all her life had been full of energy and fun. She was great. She was always smiling. The kids used to love her. She, she took them everywhere. They were a great couple. Just always laughing. I mean, they did have their hard times, but you could tell how much they loved each other. He had just retired, and they were going to do all these great things together. And it never happened for them because this disease came. In 1990, Isabel McKenna was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. We didn't know much about it, but we'd heard of it, you know. We never thought it would happen to her. But uh, that's what it was. Hi, Isabel. How you doing, sweetheart? What's the matter with you? Huh? Did you have a good night last night? Hmm? You tired? No. Nice day? Hmm? No. It's a, a tragic illness. Not a nice day. Where uh, the essence of the person slowly ebbs away. Medically, she's toward the end of it. Statistically, she's toward the end of it. In terms of duration of illness, is at the edge. How about some music? It's a party time. What the heck do we care? <laughs> there he goes. What do you think? <laughs> Are you mad at him today, huh? What? Huh? Think you're having a party? This has been a long, drawn-out thing that is, you know, worn on all of us for the past 13 years, yeah? I really, I mean, I really see it as torture. I really see it as somebody who's trapped and... Um, feel helpless about what we can do about that. This is uh, depressingly typical. It's almost a stereotype pattern, which uh, you could superimpose hundreds of patients on this same course of illness. Mm -hmm. anyway, it just keeps getting worse. It just keeps going on and on. <laughs> huh? Oh, I miss her. I miss her. Alzheimer's disease is a slow and silent killer. It draws the curtains over a patient's life and pulls families into its devastating grip. For over a century, scientists have been struggling to unravel this profound mystery. Tantalizing new clues are emerging, and breakthroughs are especially critical now in the face of a looming public health disaster. Fifteen years ago, there were approximately 500,000 Americans with Alzheimer's. Today, there are five million, ten times as many. 
it used to be just this individual tragedy. Now it's this individual tragedy that is happening so many times it's becoming a social tragedy and an economic tragedy. Every year past age 65, the percentage of people with Alzheimer's increases. By the time you reach 75, you have a 10% chance. If you live past 85, the numbers are much worse. Anywhere from 25% of people over 85 to even as high in one study as 47% of people over 85 have some level of dementia. That's an incredible number of people with disease. We now have four to five million Americans who have the disease. They're estimating that the total economic costs of that, people losing their jobs, people having to give up their jobs to take care of their loved ones, uh, all the medical costs associated with the disease, over a hundred billion dollars already, annually. But that is going to be dwarfed when the baby boomers start to turn 65. When the baby boomers start to get this disease, those numbers are going to explode. If you look at the cost of Alzheimer's now, and you look at how many patients we're going to have in 2030 because of the baby boomer um, phenomenon, then it can be predicted that our entire federal budget will be consumed caring for Alzheimer patients by 2030 if we don't do something about this disease between now and then. But a century ago, the disease was so rare it didn't even have a name. The term Alzheimer comes from Alois Alzheimer, who was a German doctor uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, both a clinician and a researcher, actually. He was the attending physician at a mental hospital. In 1901, a 51-year-old woman, who we know as Auguste D., was brought in by her husband. She was very confused and having some hallucinations and uh, some pretty serious paranoia as well. By happenstance, Dr. Alzheimer happened to be the person who met her first. He asked her a series of questions about her name and she's not even really able to tell her full name. So he told her her name, he spoke her name, Frau Auguste D. And she wrote Frau and couldn't get the rest. So he repeated it. Your name is Auguste D. Uh, and she wrote Agu. And again, she couldn't even remember the f her full name having just been spoken to her. And she put down the pencil and said, I've lost myself. 